Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday to you. Now, before we get into reviewing our answers for the independent work that you had for today, I'm going to share that with you on my own paper and on the Elmo. I wanted to go ahead and review a couple things really quickly so that um, we are clear on multiplying by multiple multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000 when solving for an unknown number, in which case, if you have to use the inverse, which is using division, to solve for that um, solve for that unknown number. Now, I know it's pretty simple to solve for multiples of 10, 100, 1,000 when just simply multiplying when you have the number there. But what happens when you don't have the number given to you in your problem? What do you do? So I'm going to show you that really quick, and then we're going to review our answers for today. All right, so I have some examples here for you on solving for the unknown. Elsa's voice from Frozen. <laughs> All right. Um, but taking a look, when we're doing this, we want to make sure that we are solving for the unknown number by simply using the inverse. So if I can't think of my multiplication, I think of my division. So my first example is 20 times what equals 120. How would I solve for this unknown number? All I need to do is cover my zeros in all situations here. So I have, I cover all my zeros and you see 2 and 12. So what I need to do is I need to do what? what times two equals 12, or 12 divided by what equals two, okay? So I'm gonna try the 12 divided by what equals two. And I know that 12 divided by six equals two, okay? So I'm gonna put my six here. Now notice there's already a zero in this 20, and there's only one zero in your answer in your product, so you don't need a zero next to the six. So your answer would just be six for this, okay? All right, number two, we have what times six would equal 240? Now, when we think about this, we can do the division as well. So it's, you can do what times six would equal 24, covering up that zero, all right, pretending that zero is not there, or you can do 24 divided by six equals what, okay? So 24 divided by six equals four. Now, we notice that there's a zero in our answer, but and there's not a zero next to this six. So we know there must be a zero next to this four, making it a 40. So 40 times six equals 240, okay? Our next one is 70 times what equals 350. Now, if I can't think of seven or seven times what equals 35, covering up those zeros, I'm going to say 35 divided by seven equals what, okay? 35 divided by seven equals five. Now, I notice that there's one zero in my answer in my product, and there's also a zero next to the seven, making it a 70, so I know that this is just five, okay? Let's see, let's keep moving here. What times nine equals 270? Okay, so if I can't think of what times nine equals 227, covering up that zero and pretending it's not there, then I'll do 27 divided by nine equals what? I know that 27 divided by nine equals three. Now I notice that there's a zero here in my product and my answer, so there must be a zero here next to the three, considering there's no zero next to the nine, so this zero becomes a, or this zero next to the three becomes a 30, okay? Our next one, what times five equals 400? Okay, so if I'm not sure what times five equals four or 40, I can cover up my zero and do 40 divided by five equals what? And then you have your answer, which equals eight, okay? 80, I'm sorry. 40 divided by five equals eight, because you have that one zero and then the extra zero there, okay? All right, so 80 times five equals 400. Now, we have our next one, 40 times what equals 320? Now, I'm sure you're seeing the same exact pattern here. All we're doing is using our inverse. If we can't think of what times the number that we're given equals that multiple of 10 or 100 or 1,000. Okay, so I'm going to continue with that division pattern that I already started. So instead of um, figuring out 4 times what equals 32, I'm going to ask myself 32 divided by what equals 4? Okay, so 32 divided by eight, I know for sure, equals four. And I notice that there's already a zero next to this four, making it a 40, and there's already a zero in my answer, so this must not have a zero next to it. So it's just 40 times eight equals 320. And that's, I mean, those are just some examples as to how you would solve for the unknown. Once again, Elsa's voice from Frozen. All right, I'm gonna get right into our, our independent work for today and going over that work, okay? All right, now number one and number two on your independent work from today, it was pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just gonna go over the basic multiple of 10, 100, 1,000, and um, for, I'm just gonna solve those for you really quick, and then we're gonna jump into those higher order thinking questions and that common core question that we really need to discuss, okay? So starting with number three, we have seven times three, seven times 30, seven times 300, and seven times 3,000. So we're really going into depth here with that, set, with that multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000. Seven times three, we know equals 21, 
and then we have seven times 30, adding an extra zero, so it would be 210. Then we have another zero, so we have 2,100, okay? And then we have an extra zero after that, so we have 21,000, okay? Simple enough, right? All right, number four, we have six times 60. Six times six equals 36. Add that zero that you see equals 360, okay? Number five, six times three, we know equals 18, okay? And then we have two zeros, so we have 1,800, okay? All right, so here we have nine times 40. Nine times four, we, need, we know equals 36. Add my one zero, add 360. Nine times four, 36 once again, two zeros, okay? Added my answer, bring my comma in, 3,600. Okay, last one in this problem, nine times four, we know 36, of course. Add the one, two, three zeros, and then it makes it 36,000, okay? Number seven, two times 90. We know two times nine equals 18. Add my one zero, 180. Now we have 18 and two zeros, which makes it 1,800. 2 times 9,000, all right, 18, 2 times 9 equals 18, then we have 1, 2, 3, zeros, 1, 2, 3, which makes it 18,000, okay? Number 8, we have 7 times 80, okay, 7 times 8, we know equals 56, add my 1, 0, 560, 7 times 8, 56, of course, 2 zeros, 1, 2, and then we have 5,600, all right, 56, seven times eight, and then we have one, two, three zeros. So one, two, three zeros in my answer. Bring my comma in where it needs to be, 56,000. Okay, last one here on my page as, at least. So three times three, we know equals nine. Okay, and then we have one, two, three, three zeros. All right, which makes it 9,000. All right, now I'm gonna flip my page here for the rest of those numbers. All right, now that I have flipped my page to have more room, we have 8 times 6, we know equals 48. How many zeros am I given? 1, 2. So I'm going to add 2 in my answer, and then I need, I need to make sure that I have my comma in the correct place of so 4,800. All right, 2 times 7, we know that equals 14. Bring my 1, 0 in, and I have 140. All right. All right, now number 12 through 16, I'm gonna have more of a discussion and read those questions to you and then also work those out. Okay, so number 12, math and science. The Amazon River is about five times the length of the Rhine River. The Rhine River is about 800 miles long. About how many miles long is the Amazon River? Write and solve an equation. All right, I'm gonna flip my camera here. All right, now we're working on multiples of 10, 100, and 1,000, of course. So we have 800 and we have five. 800 times five, but first eight times five, we know equals 40, okay? And then we have two zeros, so one, two, which makes this three with three zeros and three digits, or four digit number, and we have three digits that are zeros. So we're gonna add our comma, and then it makes that 4,000. So that question, the answer to the question is asking, if Rhine River is about 800 miles long, about how many miles long is the Amazon River, right? And solve an equation, we just did that, and that's how many miles we've got. We got 4,000 miles. All right, moving to number 13 here. All right, number 13, we have model with math here. So Sophia, Emma, and Jacob are trying to raise $300 for a local shelter. Sophia raised $50, Emma raised $140. How much money does Jacob need to raise in order to reach each goal, or to reach their goal? Okay, so taking a look at this, we have a little bar diagram here, but we need to decide whether it's giving us multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. All right, taking a look, we have our $300 at the top, which is our total number, and then we have 50 and 140, okay? All right, so I went ahead and drew out that bar diagram that I was given on that page. All right, so we have Sophia, Emma, and Jacob here. $300 is the goal, the total. We know Sophia has raised $50 so far. We know Emma has raised $140 so far, and we're waiting to see how much Jacob could rate, needs to raise to reach that $300. 300 goal limit, okay? Taking a look, when we look at this, what we're trying to do is we're just simply just trying to subtract. So first we need to combine Sophia and Emma. And when we add 140 plus 50, we get 190. So that tells us right away that all we need to do to figure out how much Jacob needs to raise in order for all of them to reach that goal is we need to subtract 300 minus 190, okay? And when we do that, you do zero minus zero, which equals zero. And then you have zero minus nine. Can you do that? Nope, you're gonna make that a 10. 
you're going to make this a 2. 10 minus 9, we know equals 1. And then 2 minus 1, we know equals 1. So our answer is 110. But 110 what? $110. So Jacob needs to raise $110 for all of them to reach that goal of 300, okay? Based off the information that we were given. All right, moving to number 14. Now taking a look, it says for 14 and 15, use the table at the right, all right? And number 14 says there are seven boys and two adults in Ethan's scout troop. How much should the troop pay for tickets to the amusement park? I'm going to take a look at this data here. We have Happy Land ticket prices. So the plans for um, that park, for that Happy Land, is plan A is the water park. We have $50 for the adult and $40 for the child. Now when we think about the amusement park, plan B, we have $40 for the adult, $30 for the child. And then we have plan C, if you want to go to the water park and the amusement park, it's $80 for the adult and $60 for the child. Okay, so when we keep that in mind, we are going to... All right, now we're thinking about this question. We have the amusement park, and I went ahead and put down the information for the amusement park. So the amusement park prices for the adults was $40. The amusement park prices for the children were $30. So it, in our word problem, we have seven boys and two adults. Seven boys, we know those are seven children, and two adults, clearly those are just adults. Okay, so first things first, what we needed to do, we need to remember that we're not including Ethan, we're just including the information that we're given, the seven boys and two adults in his group. Okay, so seven times seven boys times the amount of amount of ticket prices that it's cost for the children. So we have children, which equals $30. So seven times 30, okay? Seven times three, multiplying that multiple of 10, that equals 21, okay? And then we have that zero, you add it and you get 210. Now we have two adults, so we have, ooh, I'm running out of room here. So two adults, you have um, those adult tickets, which is $40 each, so 40 times two, Two times four, you know, equals eight. And then you have that one zero, which is 80. So you have 210 plus 180, or plus 80, I'm sorry, not 180. So you have 210 plus 80. I'm gonna kind of write it in this corner here. Okay, 210 plus 80. You have to add that up because it's asking you how much did the troop pay for the tickets to the amusement park, so total. So zero plus zero equals zero, one plus eight equals nine, and then bring down that two, you get 290. So your answer should have been $290. All right, moving to number 15, that higher order thinking. All right, so remember, we're using the table at the right for this question as well. Higher order thinking question number 15 it says, Mason visited Happy Land with her dad and a friend. They bought tickets for Plan C. How much money did they save on the two children's tickets for Plan C instead of buying separate tickets for Plan A and Plan B? Okay. All right, now that higher order thinking question, I know it can give us a headache, but it's very simple and there's many ways that we could have solved this. Okay, so taking a look, we it said, how much money did they save on the two children's tickets for plan C instead of buying separate tickets for plan A and plan B? Now when we take a look at plan um, C, it tells us that it's $60 for children's tickets. But when we take a look at plan A, it's $40 for children's tickets and $30 for children's tickets on plan B. So what I did, the one strategy that you can do that you may have done um, is 40 plus 30 with those additional tickets in the plan A and plan B, which equals 70. Then you subtract 70 from 60, which is the original plan C ticket, and got 10. But remembering that there's two of them, it's not just one of them, so that's solved for just one. Then, then at the end, you do 10 times 2, and you should have gotten $20 for your difference. Okay, so... Um, if, as long as you got $20 in some kind of way, you got the answer correct, okay? All right, taking a look at our next question, number 16, that Common Core Assessment. Number 16 says, Isabella says, 7 times 900 is greater than 9 times 7,000. Noah says, 7 times 900 is less than 9 times 7,000. Okay, so part A says, without calculating the answer, explain how to use place value strategies or the associated property to find which is greater. You could have done that. And then part B says, without calculating the answer, explain how to use relationships or basic facts to find which is less. Now, in this case, those, as long as you did part A and part B, I'm going to show you exactly how we should have solved it, because that's mainly what I want us to focus on rather than the place value strategies and all of that. I just want us to make sure we know how to solve that. All right, so main thing to take away from this, obviously we are doing multiples of 10, 100, 1,000, so we need to understand that part first. So taking a look, it says seven, Isabella said seven times 900 is greater than nine times 7,000. Let's figure out what those are first of all. So seven times nine, we know is 63, okay? And then we have our two zeros that we add, and then we put our comma. So we have 6,300, okay? 
And then she said seven times 900 is greater than nine times 7,000. So we're gonna solve for that. Seven times nine equals 63, of course. And then we have our three zeros, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so we have 63,000. Now, we have Noah who said seven times 900, which was 6,000. 300 is less than nine times 7,000. So nine times seven, nine times seven, we know equals 63. And then we have those three zeros, okay? So which one of those is true? We have 6,300 is greater than 63,000, or is Noah correct with 6,300 is less than 63,000? Clearly Noah was correct, okay? And that's mainly what I want you to take away from this question, okay? All right, and that concludes our independent work for today. I don't see any more questions. I believe it's just, yep, just one through 16. Now I'm gonna play a multiple of 10 video for you and you'll be on your way. Come on, listen up, my friends. I'ma tell you how to multiply by 10. It's so easy to do that you'll be a hero Cause all you gotta do is add a zero When you do it, it's so nifty It goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 Yeah, I got it running 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 It goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 If you wanna multiply by 5 All you gotta do is open up your eyes And see the answer, you'll be my friend It's half when you multiply by 10 It goes She knows how to do her 10s She adds a zero to the end She's good She's good He knows how to do his 5s All he has to do is multiply And he's good One is five. five. Five times two is ten. Five times three is fifteen. Five times four is twenty. Five times five is twenty-five. Five times six is thirty. Five times seven is thirty-five. And five times eight is forty. Five times nine is forty-five. Five times ten is fifty. Yeah, I can do it if I close my eyes like I told those guys. I know my fives. Five times eight is 40. Five times four is 20. Five times five is 25. Five times one is, <laughs> that's five. Five times 10 is, 50 and 5 times 7 is 35 5 times 3 is come on 15 5 times 9 is 45 she knows how to do her tens she adds a zero to the end she's good she's good he knows how to do his fives All he has to do is multiply And he's good He's good She knows how to do his tens She adds a zero to the end She's good She's good He knows how to do his fives All he has to do is multiply And he's good